Hello, everyone. I am going to step in here as I am waiting for Vedius. We do have a problem with the casters coming from LA. We're working on that, but no problem whatsoever. I also jogged over and I'm in horrible shape. So excuse me, <laughs> breathing heavily for just a second. We are taking stock from uh, for what is happening and Nocturne is on the board. So I hope that Vedius is joining me soon. This is of course an extremely important game in terms of the tournament. It is a must win for Detonation Focus Me. And I think that after the last game, we need, we're going to need to see some changes in terms of the draft. Taking stock for Damwon, we see a priority again on Kaisa, which has been interesting, uh, favoring that over the Tristana now, but we'll see how that evolves. And we have a Nar in the top lane for Khan. Hello. Have the priority in that one and can make a team completely focus on bottom side if they want to go that direction. Uh, going into Kaisa Nautilus is definitely difficult, uh, but it's it's doable if you can if you can bring that extra member, turn off the teleport possibilities for your opponents. It's definitely a gamble. Uh, but with DFM, with how how poorly the top lane side went last time, you know, giving over uh, priority to Scion with the uh, with the set pick there from Evie and not being able to get anything out of it. Uh, they might want to actually divert attention. Ooh, Seraphine is a very strong champion. I think she is criminally underplayed, but no Diana comes through, Ooh, I believe. Finally. Yes, jungle mid flex. She is very, very good in both roles. Clears incredibly fast. Yeah, she's been nerfed from her, her, her peak performance from a little while back, but still an outstanding pick. Glad to see her finally showing up. I really want it to be jungle. I'm really, really hoping this is Canyon Diana. Uh, I will wait until the last pick though. There's a reason why they use it in the flex position here. Uh, number four spot set locked in again. Let's see if uh, if if that actually means it is going to Evie. Um, actually should be a support set then, unless they no. want to do some weird support syndrome nope. action. Um, no, they don't. Should, should <laughs> should be support set this time around. Unfortunately, support set does not build early attack damage, so doesn't benefit from the last round of buffs. Um, and a lot of supports Woo! have started to go away from the champion. It does give you that possible uh, kill pressure for bottom side, though. A lot of possibilities if you can you know, create this teleport difference with a Nocturne like we're talking about and try and make a big bottom lane play. If you win a team fight there, you can get the dragon. You can start uh, you know, that pathway towards victory. Uh, meanwhile, though, I yeah. am excited. It is the jungle Diana for Canyon. Uh, when Diana got the Omega buff to her passive, extra damage on uh, jungle clear, so many, uh, you know, carry jungle players wanted to rush in on it because she does have such a good AoE uh, output as far as damage and can set up for other champions. So, yes, Diana does not have very good escape mechanisms because you have to find an off offensive unit to then apply Moonlight to, to then jump to. Um, but she has very good offensive capabilities from the jungle. And with the way that Dom Juan play, where they focus so heavily on controlling every little individual camp for Canyon, it's almost a guarantee that they're going to get Canyon fed, get Canyon yep. funneled that extra money to be the true assassin carry Diana jungle that you have seen at home in solo queue. Sure. Let's see it here on the MSI stage. Can they do it against DFM? DFM are putting it all out on the line. They've got to win this game to stay in the running to get out of the group. And Kobe, there's more threats than just Canyon on the Diana. Even if he's not going to be gigantic, even if he finds a way to give out first blood at level three, he can still just be set up for Showmaker on the Yasuo. We just saw the other bro there, Yone, take down DFM, bring out his other half. Let's go for this one. Nar can set it up, Diana can set it up, Nautilus can set it up. Showmaker has a plethora of good targets. And if Showmaker has a target, then Ghost has a target. And those two are reaching the back line and they are gonna blow some champions up. This is gonna be a really exciting, very volatile comp for Damwon. And they don't have a lot of disengage tools, but they don't need them. One thing that should be consistent for them though is Khan on the Nar here. 
Um, I definitely feel comfortable even going into the Nocturne for, for Khan to play kind of weak side for Dom1 and for them to again refocus on, on what got them here on controlling those camps for Canyon, setting up uh, these two melee carries that you're talking about, Diana and Yasuo, uh, for success. And yes, she does have the pull in, so can have ult combinations between the two. And let's see about this start here, because it actually was a bottom lane at least here. They're doing everything already from minion uh, minute one to set up Canyon. Brush check here, going to go the way uh, actually of a favorable health trade here for Dom. Yeah. to chase him through the minion wave. Ignite two. Really big damage to the barrel. So dangerously low. He's ignited one auto. He's just going to live. A flash chase from Utapon could have found himself the kill, but maybe could have gotten chased down by Ghost. Regardless, the man lives, and we get the laning phase already starting out exciting. Woo, full confidence there, too, just walking it forward, and it does look like, oh, it's more scary for uh, Dom1. They also blew an extra summoner spell. Uh, Utapon did not blow his heal in this exchange, so even though they have a little bit lower health value spread out against damage traded on Tristana uh, and some splashed over to set, they still have the extra burst heal for another possible all-in. That's why we love watching these kill lane, bottom lane, melee support matchups, Freak, and especially when they're waiting in the brush there for the level one trade, burning a lot of summoner spells on bottom lane early, could attack uh, attract junglers, Quick timing here actually works out perfectly so for, Canyon. for Canyon. He gets to see Udyr on the way, gets to finish off the, the red buff regardless, and because of the time traveled once again by Steel going for the invade, he's actually going to end up further behind in farm uh, versus Canyon, who just went for the power full clear. Even though it looks like it is pressure being exerted by Steel, it yep. will cost him, is already going to be down not only on experience currently, but on respawns for your jungle camps, one of the biggest reasons why carry, uh, you know, farm-oriented junglers have taken over is because cycling those camps, getting them to respawn and level up is so important. Ooh, Showmaker gonna be stunned, take a bit of damage. He's, you know, not in range of the Syndra, so not any bigger threat, but now the team's gonna fight over the bottom scuttle. These junglers constantly battling back and forth. No Udyr, very low on mana, is dangerous as well, though Barrel stunned up. The flash forward, nice dodge over to the scuttle crab, keeps him alive. Now Showmaker re-engaging. Kazu gets the shield up, and Showmaker, be careful your 200 health, and it's time for First Blood to come through again for Detonation Focus Me. Signs of life right now, pushing again as they are just pushing Canyon away from his jungle. And what's the secret, Freak? You just create a brawl in the river. Some of the spells have been blown early on. Showmaker really wanted to finish that one. Now oh. Canyon's gonna have to flash. Smites for health, but he's feared. Autos needs one, two more. Flash under the turret! And Evi solo kills Canyon! It's my my jungle now! Are they gonna do it again, Freak? Last time around, DFM controlled the game versus Dom1. They got the early lead and they ran that game almost all the way to the Nexus. Rematch here though, let's refocus on the river battle. Look at this, you called out Canyon, dashing away to the Scuttle Crab, but really it's about Showmaker trying to go for that kill onto Steel, staying in instead of flashing out early with the rest of Dom1. When that teleport comes in for Evi, they've got to bail uh, because you see Khan recall there back to base. That difference with the Nocturne and Evi flash following on Canyon to finish off that kill means topside as well. Gets the extra money and further funds uh, Nocturne's experience towards level six. This is still level four con in the top side. And even though they actually swap lanes so that Evie's going to take over on bottom side, a more efficient way to rotate the uh, Syndra up to top side so they didn't lose out on any of those minions. Um, Nocturne into Yasuo. Yes, Yasuo can dash through and uh, has a decent amount of ways to try and break Tether, but um, Showmaker definitely going to have a go give early priority over to the Nocturne because you can easily just Q, move in for your passive, uh, and get that quick wave push. All righty. Oh, Kazu waiting to grab some of the minions, wants to share over what he can. Very large wave, though, for Ghost to farm, and he's already up 8 CS. The assist that the Tristana has, I don't think makes up for the farm difference there, so we are going to see a very large bottom lane from Dom One Kia. Steel still wants to invade level five versus four. Smite gets the big uh, gromp, but now they're battling the big Krug, I should say. Can you drop the half HP? And now almost finds Gnar on top of it. Looks like most of this gold will still go to the Udyr. 
But yeah, honestly, the, the big Krug and at least two of the small ones went the way of Diana. So about half the value of that camp went the way of Dom1. I got to say, Freak, Dom1 coming in, everybody touting them as tournament favorites, looking to stomp through the tournament like they stomped through LCK. And it has not been anywhere near close to that. This is second game in a row where DFM are running it straight to Dom1 and getting the advantage. Steal, invade upon invade. I can't express enough how important that last follow-up kill for Evi, flash trading with Canyon and getting the kill, keeping Diana down in gold, keeping her away from the level six, having the flash blown means that Diana, as we said before, has no innate escapes uh, other than trying to jump to jungle camps or jump to enemy minions. And so these repeat invades from Steel from Udyr, who has so much of an advantage with the speed, really do find purchase. He continues to chase them out of the jungle. He controls the neutral objectives as well. You can see him blast cone, no hesitation into the dragon, can solo that one easily with his pushing bottom lane. This should be another game where DFM set up to control the early neutral objectives yep. uh, and try and move in their vision to starve out Dom1. This is something they actually did pretty well the first time around. Uh, try and increase their gold lead here. So you can see quickly already moving uh, set here with the Udyr to try and move up and pressure mid as well. Somewhat meaningful is the fact that this dragon was claimed well before Rip Herald spawns, so it's enough time to recall if you need to, or even just collect yourself and get across the map and play for the next big neutral objective. Big damage w here. Oh, Kazu's got the shield, but he's burning down and he's gonna die in a 2 on 2 Bit off way more than he could chew and Kazu drops. Yeah, even without uh, you know Canyon coming down, he was gonna get 2v2 killed there. So big mistake, big opening there from Kazu and Dom1 very happy to continue stacking ghosts. As you kind of alluded to, ghosts being one of the definite possible big threats for this team can still control the mid game. Yes, neutral objectives are gonna continue to just cascade in the favor of DFM because Canyon did end up showing on the bottom side. You know, Steel runs this jungle, okay? Steel runs the show now uh, with Udyr, can continue to invade, continue to grab all these neutrals. Now with the extra money that you can funnel into one of your solo laners with the Rift Herald as well, uh, it's gonna provide a lot of question marks here for Dom1. Control ward there to watch for jungle movements. They actually know that Canyon took down the Krugs, but it means Khan has to hide away a little bit. 63 CS on the Nar, equal or below every other solo inner in the game. Has to give away part of the wave in top side, but ultimately gets to kill the control ward and leave. Canyon also not counter jungle, this takes his entire top hand side, which, you know, for the first time ever, actually gets to take his entire camps without being stopped while doing so. So no dive, no play. Uh, nothing meaningful except for the Herald pickup. Obviously, that part matters, and it will be more gold in the pockets. Detonation focus me up 400 gold, one dragon, and a Herald yet to crash to add three to 500 more. Maybe a bit above that if they can get more turret damage. But 82 CS on a Kaisa. You can see 3,400 gold. Yeah, highest in the game, basically. Sort of functionally tied to the Udyr. Ghost is gonna be the primary carry right now. And you can see the respect that DFM pay to Dom1 because the premise is there, the premise is sound of that play. Uh, here we go though, Nocturne ulting in for the pick. Big damage on Nautilus is gonna flash the wall and stay safe, but flash away for Cannon keeps him barely safe. Re-engage though, careful now on the set. Not that tanky shield comes in. Diana hard engage in the Showmaker! And it's already kill number one. Heal comes in to keep Evie alive though, and Showmaker is traded back out. But watch out, Tristana forced to flash away after the anchor toss. Re-engage isn't good enough. The front line's gonna stay alive, but Ghost being activated means the team has to run away. Still, Dom1, can they find the next engage, the next hook, the next jump in? With a red buff on Canyon, there are tools, but Looks like DFM able to walk away. A one for one team fight overall. Started by DFM, ended by them as well. They also are going to get Dom1 mid lane priority here. Ghost's gonna uh, you know, push up this wave and attract three members of DFM. So this allows resets uh, for the rest of Dom1 and they can get right back out, try and make use of the added extra time that they have uh, to increase tempo. Crab picked up by Canyon, uh, side lanes pushed out for them as well. So it's gonna be hard for, for uh, DFM to actually regain control. This is a really big turnaround for Dom1. As you know, DFM are feeling so confident with the Nocturne Ultimate uh, and Udyr actually getting the slow and trading for Flash there onto Canyon. Um, definitely be getting two Flashes, but the follow-through combination, the Diana 
plus Yasuo combo talked about for champion select does pay off. It's just that Showmaker a little bit extra going over on the uh, uh, opposite side and does give back the counter kill. Could have been a little bit bigger for uh, for Dom one there. They still are able to get uh, the advantageous push on the minion waves to push right back out and still a reset. So this one, basically, you really have to keep your eyes on Ghost. Double summoner spells available for him. Uh, Going to be a very powerful tool here for Dom Juan to use. Anytime you have Killer Instinct up, uh, Ghost can join to make one of these jungle picks turn around in the favor of Dom Juan. Um, yes, Nocturne can turn off the lights and make it more difficult for them, but you would have to come down from top side of the map. Less than a minute left on Rift Herald. Use it or lose it. Got to be soon here for DFM. They haven't gotten any turrets down to 3,000 health, so it's not going to be a first turret take, most likely. They can still use it to force action somewhere else in the map as Dragon number two spawns. Utapon and the rest of the squad going to be safe to clear out the bottom wave. Timer now 18 seconds on the Dragon coming up. Leader looks like he's going to go for a very quick clear in his camps, but again, we're like eight seconds away from the Herald timing out. This got to be summoned by Steel, and he's about to forget that he's got it. All right, it starts blinking when it's low. It should be a bottom lane, uh, you know, summon of the Herald here. You especially, you don't want to, you know, get into combat or anything like that unexpectedly as it's timing out and, and have it fizzle and not get any value. Bottom lane is the easiest to just pop it and then try and ensure that you do get the guaranteed at least two plate value out of it. Uh, charge completes here, so yep. does set up for the possible dragon. Everybody in range. Again, Evie can use Nocturne Ultimate, then teleport in, and you still have time to cast your ultimate uh, yep. to be able to turn the numbers for this dragon in their advantage. Dom Juan should respect that. You kind of have to expect that uh, top lane dominance play there from a Nocturne. They are going to do just that with the early push on bottom, Rift Herald, uh, and Steel easily being able to solo it up. That will yep. be, again, secured here for DFM. Dragon number two, yet the gold still back in Dom One's favor off of these extra kills. So uh, DFM, it definitely is getting a bit more tenuous than how they started out. Yeah, sure. Gold's still pretty close. You can see the gold increasing over time as well. Now Dom Juan Kia has the bigger coffers. The big tech for Nocturne, keep in mind, is ult, then teleport, then instantly hit the second half of the ultimate. You can prevent your opponent from joining in. That said, Khan just burned TP to go topside, held onto the cooldown in case it was going to be used for the bottom lane. It was not going to be, so okay, let's keep going for lane pressure instead. Stride Breaker is done. Obviously an important uh, item to have there, a good power spike. We don't have it yet for Evie, so at some point we'll find him matching this one. And turret plates fall, ultimately. Two turret plates were cracked in the bottom lane. Again, two dragons to zero. That's going to make you feel better than just a simple gold lead in most cases. But it's a very close game regardless. Either team could take it. Definitely true, especially with the powerful combinations that, uh, oh, that we have drop in this vision. Game. Top side should be a pick onto Khan. He flashes what a flash. number two. That flash means Nocturne can't ult the range, but with the set dunking him backwards, it doesn't matter anyway. With the reinforcements arriving, Evie still finds a way to claim the kill. Khan dies, burning his flash as well. And look at that. There, there's not a lot of extra pressure out on the map for Dom One, so they can't get a tremendous amount. Everybody's trying to rotate towards bottom, though, and you already see Udupon backing off from the turret with mid lane jungle uh, both rotating uh, on this play. Should be mid wave picked up by Canyon and bottom lane zone zoned off by the rest of Dom Juan in exchange for this top lane focus from DFM. You pick up the Rift Herald, you got the early kill, uh, Evie's gonna be able to finish off tower and have the priority to take down a second tower with Rift Herald number two. Well, Kobe, I'm sorry, but Canyon is not gonna be the carry assassin. He is the <laughs> setup tank for his team. Ghost and Showmaker are the ones with the gold. Hard CC from Diana sets up both of their ultimates, and that's all he really has to do. That said, Canyon is still going Nashers first. He is still going for the squishy high damage build. Really didn't have to. Honestly, this would have been a, a game to consider. Just like, screw it, go Rocket Belt and make sure I can get in. It's not going to be a huge deal regardless, but a thought to keep in mind. Dom Monkey is certainly not a shoe in for winning this game. And once again, it's at the stakes. Detonation Focus Me. If they win, they become Infinity Esports' biggest fans. The Latin American squad can then beat Cloud9 after a DFM win here. Detonation Focus Me tie breaks Cloud9 for the last spot out of this group. Exactly. Uh, and let's talk about some of the uh, tools that DFM then do have to deal with these carries from Dom Juan. 
Now, the combination of dive partners of Nocturne and Udyr is actually really potent versus melee carries. You get a bear stun into a fear tether from Nocturne. So the bear stun uh, lasts almost the duration that you need to get the rest of the channel down on the Nocturne fear tether, and they chain really nicely. So Showmaker's positioning, yes, you be fairly careful with it. Don't let Udyr get too close. Yes, Udyr's uh, chem tank boost of speed was taken down a little bit, so maybe he can try and avoid it that way. Uh, but if Udyr ever gets close to you, it almost certainly means Nocturne ults in and gets the uh, CC combination. There's the ult wasted, though, as the rest of Domwon are right in front of their tower. It can easily retreat. Well, one of the big deals, though, to keep in mind, actually, is uh, you cannot Yasuo ult without vision of what's been knocked up. If there is a CC chain coming out and Evie turns the lights off, Showmaker can ult in melee range, but that is not going to be in range of most Nautilus ultimates, most Nara ultimates, or most Diana ultimates. So if Evie's quick on the trigger, he's functionally spell shooting his entire team and prevents the Showmaker wombo combo. That is really meaningful and a timer to watch out for for sure. It definitely is. Nocturne ultimate, one of the... Uh most overlooked sometimes uh, tools in pro play with that vision denial. I know also- Was that intentional, Kobe? Uh, yeah, I also know um, uh, on top of it, it's always funny to hear pro players talk about, you know, comms during Nocturne Ultimate. I think I've heard every single pro player talk about how, uh, you know, everybody kind of reverts to just being like, ah, I can't see. And it kind of, it actually messes up your audio comms as well as your, your visuals in yeah. game because everybody has that visceral, uh, visceral reaction to it. So, to Kobe, I got some tech for you, uh -huh. okay? Um, have easily accessed vines for your teammates. Mine's actually one, two, three, four. I rebind my items. Duskbringer shows through Fog of War. So just press one, two, three, four, and see which one has Dustbringer on them. You're like, ah, oh, it's that guy. And then you ping for them because they're too dumb to do it themselves. Yeah, I mean, the uh, key bindings for, for camera movement for teammates is a standard for junglers, at least for sure. Uh -huh. I definitely recommend it uh, as you do as well for, for all players. Um, but super, super important for junglers to be able to check all lanes as well. Here we are setting up for the dragon, though. That thing gets burned Rushing down. Rushing it down. It's going to be grab no problem. So Damaki has slowed the dragon stacking. They're going to find an engage. So here we go. Lights turned off. Not going to arrive. The oh. dunk comes in. Is it enough? Arya picks up Khan. Trade it back one for one, but Ghost is dead already. So it's Showmaker and Kanan against the world. And the resets come in. Yudapan is on the chase. Three versus two. The dragon went to Dom one key, but the team fight went to detonation focus me so showmaker trying to find a way out he'll be stunned up he's gonna find some decent damage he'll find a bit more but it's not gonna be enough four to two in the team fight a red buff claimed as well they nerf support set and kazu doesn't care freaky dunks the entire team what a big opening from him right in to the face breaker plus w over the entire squad what a setup from kazu here Dragon gets burned down, so the objective is gone. But as Udyr gets hooked in, he flashes for the four-person ult with Nautilus, then barely gets off the face breaker into the uh, W setup for his team. They're able to pick up the extra kills on the outside, chasing down Showmaker as well. It's very unfortunate for DFM that they lose the Dragon before that because that would have set them up for Soul uh, on the next Dragon. However, getting that extra gold in the team fight uh, victory for them will go a long way. You see now bounties sprouting up on multiple members. Here we go, 1,500 gold lead and still up a Dragon. And with the comp countered a little bit, the more I watch this game play out, there really are some good you know, soft to hard counters available. Again, Nocturne turning out the light, preventing the Asuo combo. Look, sometimes he's in melee range anyway, but sometimes he's not, and here comes the play. TP channeled in time. Careful for Kazu, he's dangerously low. Meganar is there, finds the first setup, and now Steel has to run away. Barely sidesteps the anchor, and as they say, the comp is countered. Dumb one key to find their way right back in. Ah, Kazu's name in lights, uh, it only lasts so long there. After the dragon fight gets picked off so quickly, Khan on Nar chases him down relentless here in Damwon now with the power play. And right away, on to the Baron without a Nocturnal to play around. He doesn't really have one in the first place. They are just going for it. Damwon Kia are not going to pay respects. They're going to say, look, you can try, but you know, Steel, your smite is on D. And oh, that is the
combo. That's what they were looking for. Canyon sets him up. Showmaker knocks him down. And Steel will not have a chance to get one in this game. He's going to walk away. Back to the mid lane. Khan zones him out, though. Baron going to be claimed by Dom Juan Kia. Just when you thought Detonation Focus Me got what they wanted, they lose it all and the poise on stage here for Dom One. You see the instant turn. Such good focus from them. Actually, Khan goes for the solo, and he's gonna bowl. What a shot. The boomerang claims it in the end. Khan knocks down Steel, and just like that, Dom One Kia up 4,000 gold. All right, Dom One trying to extinguish the flames of hope here for DFM. Really good turn off of Baron there. Uh, again, another good usage of the Diana plus Yasuo combo, uh, but really the follow-up kill being given over by Steel. No respect from him towards Khan, and Khan takes another frontliner's life. Look at Ken, you know, flashes in for it, fully grouped up as they're trying to make their way through this small jungle corridor into the Baron. That is one of the most dangerous spots where we see so many games being lost. Here's Canyon's point of view uh, as he, actually that was uh, Showmaker's point of view as yep. he follows up on Canyon <laughs> and is able to, to get the ultimate off of the knock up there. Quickly dispatching all of DFM and setting up now huge, huge, huge momentum for Dom Juan. With this Baron buff, it makes it so easy to revert to 4-1. Uh, even though Showmaker doesn't have teleport, doesn't matter. You only need to play two lanes. Khan down bottom side has been very big for them in the last you know, five minutes or so, especially on this NAR. You can easily push in that side lane while everybody else just busts up these uh, minions in the mid lane and slowly whittles away. All right, well, it's time for the Japanese squad to dig deep to withstand the Red Bull Baron power play that Dom Wan's picked up and find a way to come back in later. They can still make the split map plays. The TP advantage for Nocturne just exists because of the ultimate. Khan always has to be early or it's not gonna happen. That's a, certainly a big deal. Let's see what can come through as now right now the bottom river is going to be owned and with the Baron buff still on for a minute, second dragon should be no problem for DK to pick up. So Dom Juan going to tie that score line and be 10 minutes away from Soul themselves. Okay, so Dom Juan have, well, maybe they get a pick here. Meganar though, and you could have maybe looked for the dunk, but that's pretty scary and not always likely to work too well. So they're going to wait it around, but you know, maybe, just maybe. DFM chooses to go for the fight anyway. I'm not sure it would work out. Nocturnals pop. They're going for the fight, but they're all stuck right in the brush. The front line held well by the Nautilus. Takes absolutely zero damage, but still in the back line. Set tries to buy some time. It's a trade of one for one, but the re-engage comes in for three more kills. And just like that, DFM answer easily. They tried, and no, they are killed. Minus two for the fight. Showmaker knocks down the wave. Time to kill mid lane tier two. Yeah, they go a little bit early there because Khan still had Meganar. Khan still had the timer if they waited a little bit and he went mini and then tried to force it maybe have a better chance but as stated from champion select this dom Juan team is an omega dive heavy team they have this giant wombo combo they're trying to use and if you dive right into the nar diana yasuo nautilus then they are going to use it Giant combination there, picks off another team fight for, for Dom One, and since they have so much control now, it's just so easy for them to set up at these objectives, force DFM uh, to divert away from spreading the map, which they would want to use, uh, so they could actually get big value out of Nocturne Ultimate and into the team fights. So there you see, Khan uses the, the last of his rage bar, gets off his ultimate, and even with uh, the support exchange there, the follow-up once again, it only takes a couple of members grouped up. Diana goes in, full combination lockup here from Yasuo. A showmaker is able to press R. And look at that, all the bounties now have switched sides. <laughs> yep. And after multiple team fight victories here, Dom Juan should be able to continue to execute. It's very simple when you have, you know, comps like this that, uh, that excel when grouped up, excel with these synergies uh, and easily can layer their crowd control. That one looked nice. 400 damage from Showmaker. He was just there to hold him in place to make sure the back half of Diana Elk could land. No one could flash out of the circle. So, you know, sometimes <laughs> they, you know, they each take turns being being the primary carry. This time around, Canyon got to do it. 2-2-6 two, two and six now onto him. And despite how much he got set back in the early game, how aggressively Steel counter-jungled him, well, he's ahead in farm. He's ahead in kills. Looking pretty good.
Yep. And as with AP junglers, one of my favorite things about, you know, the this resurgence of AP junglers recently is that you can, you know, invest in these dark seals. Uh, it's such a strong item, I feel like, early on, super efficient. Um, and now those being stacked up also lend towards junglers actually upgrading towards Medjai's and being those, living that assassin dream, living that super hard carry dream. Uh, so Showmaker approaching the level 16 on Yasuo as well. They do spread out. Khan trying to get away and does break the tether. Yep. Hop stride breakers enough movement to get away from that one. So nice try, Evi, but not going to find anything good. And the attempted follow through not going to be there either. Of course, Baron's timed out for a while, but next one spawns in 40 seconds. As Dom Juan uh, just start taking over the Western jungle. They're going to have no problem making sure that Detonation Focus Me cannot walk in and contest that. All right, again, it makes it so difficult when you have this this potential four dive, this potential four combo here from Dom Juan, um, for DFM now to actually extend anywhere on the map. You see this very good job of Dom Juan leaving super deep vision in both sides of the DFM jungle. They can then starve them out of their own jungle camps uh, while they wait for the spawn of the big neutral objectives. Baron's up in three seconds. They can e easily rotate over. Showmaker doing his part, clearing out the jungle as well. It's immediately started up. And again, it's so difficult for DFM because they have to funnel through these small corridors in the jungle if they wanted to try and check. And that's just a death sentence versus either Yasuo knockup or Diana knockup or Nautilus ultimate knockup, and they don't want to go for it. So they find Khan instead. He's about to be Meganar, but it should still be some decent damage. Gets the stun. Be careful. Meganar puts them all into the wall, and Ghost is here. Boo! And he's looking for a bit of damage. Sadly, though, <laughs> DFM. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> Honestly, DFM should be, though. Baron's been claimed. Nautilus Ult sets up. Easy peasy. The lemons and limes are squeezy. There's a couple of kills picked up for Showmaker. 2-0 in that fight. And Dom Juan now up 9,000 gold. Make it a little bit more. Not a problem for Canyon. <laughs> He's even got the, uh, the uh, DFM flair for good measure. But this fight is over. This game is over. And though the early game looked good for the LJL, they have been eliminated from MSI 2021. And this game is under 30 minutes short. As more kills come across, the ults are already back up. An ace finally in the end. Dom one Kia going to end it 5-1 and one in the group stage. DFM. Looked good in the first week, but a two and four scoreline will not move on to the next. Honestly, yes. Huge congratulations to Dom Juan. They had already moved on. They get another win here under their belts for DFM and for them going home. I think this is actually the best international showing that we have had from the LJL. I yes. think they can be incredibly proud of the work they put in here. This team is actually going to get even stronger yep. when Steel gets residency in Japan. Uh, currently, he's taking up an import slot. They can get their um, previous support back into the main lineup as well. So I think there's a lot of good things ahead for the LJL uh, at, in total, but especially for DFM. They really came to play here at MSI in yeah. 2021 uh, and can be proud of what they laid out on the Rift. Legitimately, uh, watch for DFM at Worlds this year. Imagine they have a real support because Kazu was their coach for three years and stepped back in and, and the weaknesses were obvious. With a real support, this team is legit scary. Be ready for them. Dom Juan Kia, we give them their due. Five and one, they top the group. We'll see them in the Rumble stage. No one's surprised by this. Maybe, maybe that one loss we're surprised by, but we'll see them again next week. That's the big part. Now, as we head to the break earlier, I had the honor of breaking down Cloud9's team anthem on the League of Legends playlist on Spotify. Let's check it out. Heading into Cloud9 for Stilette Infinity. See you soon. Australian? Yep, check. All right, how about the fact that they're destined to be in the Hall of Fame for all time? Yeah, two for two. So far, so good. And just look at the Cloud9 season overall. Yeah, they lost to TL in the lock-in finals, and then they come back, beat them in both best of fives, despite losing the regular season games. And and game five was magical. The lane swap Scion to get three jungle quadrants and then get five straight first blood the enemy top laner. I mean, Cloud9 are the best team by far. They're going to clap. Oh my. 
smell irresistible. The new Axe Effect. You don't have a chance against me. I can calculate 90 trillion moves in advance. Not fair. Not fair. Red Bull gives you wings. to the State Farm Analyst Desk with Dom Monkey's victory. Both Dom1 and Cloud9 advance out of Group C and into the Rumble stage. So congratulations to those two teams. Let's pull up the standings to see where everything landed in Group C. Of course, we still have the last game coming, which is Infinity versus C9. It is merely a formality and uh, for those bragging rights. I do also want to take a minute to say goodbye to Detonation Focus Me. I know Freak already talked about it at the end of the cast, but this is kind of the roster on the route to their perfect roster in summer. And even though that is a good thing to look out for, Emily, I felt like there is so much that could be for DFM in this stage. I mean, that game versus Don Juan, that, uh, you know, we got turned on his head in the end, that game versus Infinity where they came back. Oh, it is so bittersweet. I'm so... I'm so sad, actually, because obviously being from NA and knowing the C9 guys, I do want them to go through, right? Let's be honest. Um, however, my heart also breaks for Detonation Focus Me because this is, in my opinion, based on like gameplay alone, by far the best play that Japan has ever shown in an international stage, in my I opinion. 
Absolutely, I think we can all agree with that, Grabs. And if you kind of know now that there's going to be an upgrade in that support position, especially, I think Kazu looked a bit sometimes like a fish out of water, <laughs> but who can blame him? That actually gives high hopes for DFM going into possibly Worlds. Yeah, and not only for DFM, again, for the entire wildcard scene, I think this tournament has shown that it's not that far off to see a team qualifying. Um, especially, like, again, in Group B and C, I think, are the best examples of that. So I think... Um, this format has kind of shown, even though people in the beginning were against it, why these teams deserve to be there and actually have the shot to play against the best. Because we would not get these games if we had the old format, right? So I think um, they can look forward to it and hopefully at Worlds have a similar path to, um, to victory. And they're going to be a team now that people will have on their, on their books and they will not be surprising anymore. They will be coming in as one of the better wildcard teams. And I think the big teams have to like and have an eye on them for sure. Yes, I completely agree. Let's take a look at how the cookie crumbled in this game specifically, because we saw a bit of an oddball comp out of Dom one, but a very strong start out of Detonation Focus Me. And we have seen already that Steel is very proactive for that team. Grabs. Yeah, and uh, um, I mean we see these commercials very often about River. Here though, um, Nocton actually had the PP ready, so it's gonna be also gonna be 45 before Nark can join. Um, so I think that one here, a bit of a bad communication. They should know they can't enter River here in this scenario. But again, um, the National Focus me really quick at picking this up and actually punishing them for it. So again, very decisive play. Um, this is something that we would not have seen in the past from Waka teams. Mm -hmm. uh, Inventive as well, reacting to what Dam One fielded. We're going to get the draft on uh, just after this. What did you think of the, the composition that Dam One drafted <laughs> here, Emily? I think it's a composition that they wanted to perhaps test out on stage. I'm not saying it's a bad comp. It's a, it's a fun comp. <laughs> I, I, I've I been wanting to see the Di Diana Flex, to be honest. Uh, we've heard about it, not as much as like the Morgana and the Rumble kind of dominating the meta, but going into this tournament, people were like, oh yeah, like it's, you know, scrim meta is like super team fighty and we've seen Diana, we've seen Kiana and obviously we saw Kiana previously Previously, mm -hmm. this game, we have we now see Canyon piloting the Diana. Um, I think they had a few rough spots with it. Showmaker went a little too ham in one of those <laughs> team fights in the top uh, bot side uh, red jungle, I believe. But um, I, I liked how Damwon tested this out, I guess. It's a kind of a win-win situation for them, right? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like they came in, they're confident in this team composition, they're confident enough in themselves and their team fighting that they're going to take this game. And then if they end up looking super, like, insanely dominant on it, right, then other teams have to adjust their drafting strategy. Yeah, correct. And despite the slow start, Damwon uh, Kia did turn it on around the Baron pit in their drive to victory, presented by Mercedes-Benz. And Grabs, you know, you're just waiting for it to happen. And you know, if they get the right engage with this composition, it's going to be deadly. And that's what happened here. Yeah, exactly. Um, Kia, of course, um, DFM has a flash check because of the support death. But just very quick flash ult, um, not much time to react at all. Um, we, we've seen this kind of combos in the past with Agrara's Flash, E for Yasu, now Diana. Um, there's just not much to do, honestly, in this situation, especially also the, um, the ocean map helps out here. It's kind of hard for DFM to like, approach on a wide angle and just one shot and um, oh. just pick it up, go home. Also such a heartbreak for Detonation Focus Me because they're still in this one yeah. and then this happens and you're just like, I, I guess, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is what's going to happen. Uh, so let's take stock a little bit of the teams that are advancing now. Emily, Damwon came into the day 3-0, and zero, then dropped that game versus C9, and all of a sudden everyone was up, up in arms, and I'm sure we'll talk about this in cooldown as well. But obviously, this is not out of the ordinary for strong teams, especially LCK teams, sometimes dropping one game but then leveling up for the next stage. Do you envision a similar path for Damwon going into the Rumble stage? Yeah, I do think Damon will level up. I still think they're one of the best teams here. If there's anything that I think other teams could take away from this stage, though, it's that there are a few holes in their early game, right? And it's something that we were kind of had concerns about given some of their games in LCK where other LCK teams were able to pressure them early and then they were able to come back via punishing, via scaling, and via these kind of like larger team fights with Khan flanking around. So... I still think they're definitely going to default to that play style because it seems to be what they're most comfortable on. I was actually curious to see if they were going to switch it up at all. Um, however, I do think that means that there are 
a few holes in their early game that teams like, uh, you know, a Mad Lions or like an RNG would look to try to punish there. And that C9 already punished today, helping them get to the next stage. But for more on their win, let's send it over to Dash, who is standing by with Showmaker. Thank you very much, Shocks. I'm standing by with Showmaker at the, the conclusion of their group stages here. Five and one is the performance uh, for the team. And so I'm curious, just overall, Showmaker, how you reflect on the team's performance in the group stage. 네, 지금 5승 1패로 그룹 스테이지 마무리하셨는데 그룹 스테이지 전반적으로 돌아보시면 어떻게 좀 활약하신 것 같나요? 어, 일단 그룹 스테이지에서 뭐 좋은 성적 거둔 것 같은데 어, 이제 경기 내용을 보면 다 아쉬웠던 것 같아서 좀 경기력을 끌어올려야 할것 같습니다. Well, I think the achievement itself, I think it's really good and decent, but looking at each game, I think there were a lot left to be desired, so I think we have to work on those issues. Okay, well, I do want to congratulate you on moving through to the Rumble stages, but Showmaker, I spoke to you before the tournament even started, uh, and you did say it was too early to say whether or not this team could start the next era of dominance for Korea, but that it was one of your goals. I'm curious what you think the team needs to work on and change to continue that quest for dominance. 사실 MSI 시작 이전에 했던 그런 인터뷰에서 이제 새로운 왕조의 시작을 담원이 어, 시작하는 거라고 말하기엔 조금 이른 것 같다라고 말씀하셨잖아요. 그럼 지금 경기력을 바탕으로 담원이 그런 왕조를 시작하는 팀이 되기 위해서는 어떤 점을 중점적으로 좀 어, 보완해야 될것 같나요? 어 일단 저희 팀에 이제 원래 하던 스타일이 있었는데 이제 그런 스타일이 조금 잘안 먹히는 것 같아서. 어 여러 가지 방향으로 다 해보고 있고 이제 그런 거를 잘 저희 스타일에 맞게 정립시켜 가지고 잘해야 할것 같습니다. So we had our own style to play out the games, but I, I think that's not really working well right now. So we are on our way or in the middle of the process in order to kind of find the new approaches to the game. So I think we have to find our own kind of new style. Well, within that, uh, this international tournament has a new format, unlike anyone we've ever seen before, where you play in a group stage, and yet you're going to go into, in a sense, another group stage, a big group with uh, six teams. How do you feel the new format kind of allows for you to identify what your play style should be and ultimately improve? 그러면 이번 MSI가 조금 새로운 지금 포맷을 도전 시도하고 있잖아요. 이제 그룹 스테이지를 한번 치르고 또한 번의 약간 그룹 스테이지를 치르는 느낌으로 진행이 되는데 이런 과정이 좀 플레이 스타일을 정립하는데 어떤 식으로 조금 영향이나 도움을 주는 것 같나요? 음, 확실히 이제 대회에서의 판수가 되게 맞는 방식이어 가지고 어, 여러 가지 다양한 픽들을 실험해 볼수 있을 것 같고 음, 이제 보시는 분들도 더 재밌지 않을까 생각합니다. Yeah, I think it's definitely help us to have more experience on stage. We, have, we get to play more games on stage, so it helps us try out a lot of new different picks. And at the same time, for the viewers as well, I think they, they have more things to kind of enjoy. Well, speaking as one of those viewers, I can confirm I'm looking very much forward to seeing you compete against the other five teams in the Rumble stage. But Showmaker, I want to congratulate you on your victories here today and qualifying through. I'm sure I'll speak to you more uh, when we get to that next week. But for now, I'm going to say goodbye to you. We're going to throw to a quick break because we got one more game to close out today. It's Cloud9 versus Gillette Infinity.